What up, everybody? I'm Matt McCarthy. I'm a local freelance 3D artist in the lovely city of Boston. And I'm going to show you how to use the Tracks Editor. Um, tracks Editor is used for creating a bunch of animation clips and blending them together. Um, it's a great way to test to see like what your video game cycles would look like before you um, import them into your game engine. Um, okay, so first step. Let me just load one of my characters that I had created. Uh, I'll just go to my. All right. So here's this character. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to rig it in this um, tutorial. This is just to um, talk about the tracks editor. So maybe I'll do another video on how to actually rig a character, but that's a very long, complex process. I'm just assuming that you have a character that you made, you rigged it with a bunch of controls, and you have the joint system in there, and uh, we'll go from there. So the tracks editor is located in, make sure you're in your animation menu set right up here, um, window, animation editors, and your tracks editor. Now, the first step in using the tracks editor is you need to create a character set. Now, what the character set is, is basically, um, it's almost like a quick select set of a specific group of controls, but it's like a selection of controls to, to be used in the tracks editor. So, um, basically, the, the first step would be to, you, you take all your character controls, I'll just highlight them. Um, I... I choose not to have my main mover control in my character set, so I'm going to control click off that guy. So all these controls that I just selected, I want to make a specific character set of that. So I'm selecting that. You can, and then in the tracks editor, whenever it pops up, uh, you just go to create character set. Um, let's check out the option box. So I I already made a character set for this guy. So I mean, I named it Soldier Character Set. Um, attributes. I just have all keyable. You can have, um, you know, all your attributes that you currently have. Say you like made very, very custom ones um, in your channel box over here. You could do that. You can even have uh, exceptions too. But I, I just like to keep the default settings just for this tutorial. Um, so you just name a character set. You could just have it as body character set or whatever. So this is just my soldier character set. And I'm just going to include all keyable attributes. And then you go to create character set. But uh, I already created that, so that's what we would click on. So once you do that, um, you got your character set. Now, where is it? It is right down here, where it says no character set. If you click on that, your new character set that you just made will appear right here. So when you start doing like tracks animation, you want to start messing around with clips, you will then switch to your character set down here. Okay, so that's the first step in using your um, your new rig for, uh, for, for animation purposes. So I'm just going to pop into a new scene right now, um, and this is where you're going to start to do your animation. I don't save. I don't like to animate in the base file of my uh, my character. I like to just start a brand new scene and uh, and I'll reference my character in here. So the reference editor, create reference, and I'm going to use that same character. I'll press six to show my textures. Okay, so here's my new character. He's in a brand new scene, and this is when I can start animating. You can do, you know, whatever cycles that you want. Um, so after you're done animating your character, let me just like pose him out or something. Um, so for, for this character right here, um, I have this little rig right here uh, to constrain like weapon props to. Because I wanted to make sure, so if I have another gun, or like another prop that I have in another scene that has a whole different set of controls, that gun's properties aren't part of that character set that I just made. 
So by having this little piece right here, um, I, I constrain the weapons or whatever props to this piece right here because this is part of this character's uh, character set. But everyone's rig will probably be a little different. Um, I, this is just a very specific thing for for my character. But uh, yeah, so after you start making an animation, let me just position this. And I think I have a control to constrain the right hand to this. I'll just turn that control on so that whenever this moves, that moves. And I'll constrain, I'll turn that one on to the left hand. All right. So uh, let me just turn off my joints, make sure I don't select my joints. So when you do an animation cycle, you always key the first and the last frame should always be the exact same position. Um, and then you go somewhere in the middle to... You know. This is a very, very simple just demonstration of what uh, you would do when you're animating and setting up a clip. Sorry, this is very, very bare bones. This is just to get the idea across. Okay, so say I have my awesome walk cycle. It's pretty sweet. Um, now, uh, the, the most important thing when you're creating these animation clips from what I've noticed is really making sure that you really have a key on the first and last frame of all your controls in, uh, in that specific character set that we just made. So, um, alright, so made sure I had a keyframe on the first and last frame. This will be a 48 frame walk cycle at 24 frames per second. Um, so after you do that, um, we'll go back to the tracks editor. I have it on my shelf right here. You'll see it, uh, the little icon is just a TE for it. But again, that's in window, animation editors, and tracks editor. Um, so that animation that we just did, that 48 frame animation. Um, now we're going to want to take that and make a clip out of it. So to do that, let's load our soldier character set or whatever you have. Now when you do that, you can see that you'll see these keyframes pop up in your time slider down here. Um, this will show you literally every single keyframe that is applied to all the controls on um, on your notice how I don't even have uh, any of the the controls selected. It's just showing me that there are keyframes of this character set located in here. This is this is all the controls that I keep. So once you have your character set loaded, um, we're going to in the tracks editor. Uh, you will notice this little um, box up here. Create animation clip. So let's check out the option box of that. So create animation clip and we will uh, I'll just call this test walk cycle. Um, let me just make sure I have all the settings reset. I'm just going to reset the settings. So by default here are the settings. I'm using my 2013 by the way. Um, so by default it's going to take the animation curve, so all the curves, um, whatever we had in our time slider, in our uh, on our graph editor. Um, let me just. So it's going to take all these curves, oops, and make a clip out of it. You can have uh, very specific um, time ranges. So if we want to just select shift select all this right here you could even set you know just select it say your animation goes on to maybe like 60 or 100 frames or something like that but you just want to make an animation cycle out of you know whatever you can just do it by selected but for this I'm just gonna take the animation curve um, oops create animation alright uh, so let me just type in walk 
test walk cycle. Test walk cycle. I'm going to leave everything at default right here. Uh, the channel offsets, I'll get into this a little bit later. This is a little confusing. Um, but I'm just going to keep everything else default right here. Uh, right here, it's going to put this anim this new animation clip in my tracks editor and uh, the visor at the same time. So let's just go to create clip. And so now we just created an animation clip. Now, if you want to see all the clips of this specific character set that we have, uh, there's a little button in your tracks editor. It looks like a little stick figure with a plus next to it. When you click on that, that loads your current, it's just like a visual uh, thing, uh, to see your character set loaded up here. Um, if, you, if you're working with multiple characters that all have their own different character sets, um, you make sure you load that, and then you press that button right there, and that'll just show you uh, player assault, soldier, CS for character set. Um, so this is the animation clip that we just made after we, uh, after we just pressed that button right now. Uh, and notice how if I go back into uh, my character set editor and I go to go back to none, when I select my controls, none of the keyframes are in the time slider anymore. That's because they are in our uh, our animation cycle, uh, animation clip that we just made right up here. So the animation is now tied to this clip right here. So let me just jump back into this soldier character set. Um, so from here, this is where you can like rearrange all of your different um, your clips, and you can have them like blending one into the other. Um, so let me just show you some things to look out for here. So these top numbers in this animation clip, this 1 and this 48, this shows you your original frame range that you use to make the clip. Uh, see when I move this anywhere in time, you'll still see that this is 1 to 48 frame cycle. So we're in. So when I move around here, you can move the, around the time slider in here or in uh, at the bottom of your screen right here. But uh, let me just go back to frame one and move this. Oops. Yeah, sometimes that happens. If you like move the the clip, it uh it starts like a new uh, like column or something. So uh, you can just remove specific uh, tracks if you want. Just right mouse click on it and go to remove if that ever happens. But uh, sometimes you may want multiple, you know, layers. I'll show you later when I have uh, I have a bunch of other uh, test cycles that I'm gonna pop in here just to show you what you can do with it. But um, yeah, so if you just click and drag on your in the middle of your clip, that's how you move it around. Um, if you move your mouse over the the bottom right corner or the bottom left corner, this is. This is if you want to like stretch your clip out. So if I want it to be longer, a lot longer, I can make that a like a 164 cycle. So now when I press play, see how he goes a much. Oops, let me give myself a little bit more time. Uh, I'll just give myself a thousand frames. Oops. Okay. So when I play it, it's very long. So if I want to shrink it up and make it faster, oops. Uh, you can just click that and drag it to make it faster. So now you can see it goes much quicker. But uh, it is a 48 frame cycle. Now, if you wanted to duplicate and repeat this clip multiple times, uh, you, there's multiple ways that you can do that. Uh, if you just control D, control duplicate, um, it puts a new clip on a brand new track. I can even drag this down onto here. Um, and that will repeat your cycle. Uh, another way of doing that, instead of having a control D to duplicate all your clips, if you hold shift and click on this click and drag on the bottom number right here, I'm holding shift. When you drag that out, see how it's it's it is duplicating that clip and you can see 
at these check these little tick marks that that is when the the, the beginning and end of a new uh, cycle. So shift shift clicking and dragging will uh, will basically do the same thing as repeating your animation. Now uh, these clips right here they're located in your visor. That's where if you don't know what your visor is, that's where like all your paint effects are located. You can jump to the visor through the tracks editor just by going to uh, file and visor. Please don't crash. All right, good. <laughs> there we go. So your character clips um, in this visor are in your character clips tab right here. So you can. Uh, it's just like the default place where it saves it to. Um, after you create an animation clip uh, or any kind of animation cycle, I like to export these to a different folder. So um, if you right mouse click and hold on your character clip in your visor, you can even do it through here too. Um, you can click on your, your character. But basically, you just go to File and Export Animation Clip, and you can just save them to a folder on your... Uh, on your computer somewhere, uh, just to stay organized and just to just just to have them in a safe spot. Um, all right, so let me just show you. Let me delete this and let's show you a couple of other things. All right, just make sure I'm still going. Okay. So I have some other character animation cycles that I've made. If you want if so I if you have a whole library full of cycles, um, make sure that you're on your character um, set. Make sure that's loaded in there. Uh, go to the frame that you want to import them in and if you go to file, import animation clip to characters, you do that and uh, so I saved them into this clips folder right here. So let me just have I have a an idle cycle that I made. Uh, idle cycle T E clip and I'll open that. So that pops in my characters idle cycle. You can see them down here. Okay. Um, now here's the beauty of the tracks editor. and You can take multiple animation clips and blend them together. So I have this idle cycle of him just chilling around with his gun. And say after that, I want to blend that into him running. Uh, well, I made a run cycle, so let me go to that frame. Uh, 205. Import animation clip to characters, and I have a run cycle. And I name them TE clip, tracks editor clip. That's how I know that it's different from the actual scene that I made the cycle in and this is just the clip there there is a difference make sure you do that so when you're importing your animation don't import the actual uh, animation scene that you made make sure you're only importing that uh, that clip that we just made so I'll just go to that run cycle okay so here you can see that there's a little bit of a jump right here whenever this clip ends and goes right into the walks, the run cycle. Let me just duplicate this a bunch of times. So as we're playing that, there's a big snap that happens right here. <clears throat> Even if I oops, move this out here. Now to prevent to to prevent that from happening, uh, there are there are some blending options in the tracks editor. So if I wanted to blend this run cycle with my idle cycle, you click on one, hold shift, and select the other. We got both of them. From here, I can move them both together. Um, but if you right mouse click after you have both of them selected, right mouse click over it, there's this blend option right here. So when you do that, it creates this little green arrow it says when I'm done with the end of this cycle, I'm going to do my best guess to blend into the next cycle. You can see how the computer um, does its best guess. But it's a little less jarring to watch. 
when you have that blend. Now you can either blend it with uh, this clip oops, in front of that clip, or if you have this overlapping, it'll, that looks like it's a better um, blend right there if you overlap them a little bit. Basically it's taking this clip's animation and this clip's animation and basically um, tweening between... Uh, it's, it's doing its best guess to, to try to blend those together. So that looks like it's pretty good. And, uh, yeah. And then let's see. Let's go to the end right here. Actually give myself a couple of frames. And then I have another animation cycle that I could put in, which is the stop cycle. Uh Run cycle stop. Tracks editor clip. So when I load that, let's see how that looks. There we go. So you kind of get the gist of uh, you know what's going on here. Now. Let me get. Let me talk about the channel offsets. That cha the channel offsets can be a little confusing right now. So each of these character clips, when you click on them, um, just make sure you're in your attribute editor. This uh, this first box right here. Um, so when I select one of our animation clips, this channel offsets right here. If your animation is doing something like very very strange, where you're you know, controls are either shrinking on each other or, you know, arms are popping way out there when you're blending between certain clips. It has some, it has everything to do with this channel offsets right now. Uh, make sure when you have this selected to click this all absolute button right now. Make sure all of our clips are all absolute. Basically what that's saying is make sure that, um, all the controls are 100% the value that we initially keyed them at. Um, with that that initial animation cycle that we made, when, if you have it all absolute, that is it is 100% going to behave exactly how you originally animated it. What relative is, and I I've, I don't really use it, but there are specific cases where you would want to use it. It basically, uh, it almost like layers your animation on top of each other based on the last clip. So say you have a character that's that starts running from your uh, from your center point right here. Oh, I say he starts walking, and then you have an animation of him uh, running after that. If you have that those channel offsets set to um, to relative, it basically takes um, the speed and the movement of the previous uh, cycle and and layers it on top of that. It, it, I get some very, very weird... Um, uh, you get some very weird behavior when you do that. So I, I, if you're just doing animation cycles for like video games and stuff, I'd really just stick with that, um, the, the absolute, all absolute values. Um, so let's see. Oh, here's something that may look a little weird. If you have two animation clips on top of each other, without that blend, Maya does a very strange thing where it, <laughs> it's taking both animation uh, information and it's trying to blend it on top of each other. It's taking basically... Uh, the positions of all your controls, I mean, the, the positions of all my controls in the run cycle are significantly different from the stop cycle, but it's just doing its best to try to figure out what you want to do. So make sure your animation clips are, you know, just, just line up after the fact, unless you put a blend in between them. So if I have these two and blend it, Yeah, it still looks a little weird. 
you just got to really think when you're making your clips what's uh, what the first and last frame of your clip would be. So when I made this run cycle, I made sure that the last frame of this run cycle is the first frame of this stop cycle. So you just kind of have to think smart when you're making your clips. Um, makes the whole process a lot easier uh, and, and cleaner that way. But uh, yeah, there's a couple of other options here in the in the in the tracks editor. You could uh, say you take a clip, you can split the clip, and that split will happen based on where your uh, time slider is. So say you want to cut it up at a very specific keyframe, you can put a split there and see how it just cuts it into two different clips um, that may be um, you know useful in certain situations. Uh, what else we got? Uh, oh, activate keys. This is pretty important. So, say you want to edit one of your uh, one of your tracks clips. Um, you may be asking yourself, like, where the hell are the keyframes um, when I select this specific control? Like, where is it? Um, if you want to edit your keyframes of a very specific cycle. You right mouse click over your clip and you go to activate keys. It turns the clip purple and that means it's in edit mode. And now you can see down below in your time slider you have your um, uh, all your keyframes from from that animation clip. And notice how when I drag out, I'm dragging out into these clips right here. There's there's no animation. When you have a clip activated, it's only showing you information from this clip right here. So here is where you can go ahead and edit, say you want you know, to edit his head. Uh, so here's the thing, if you're going to edit your animation in a very specific clip, so we're currently on our soldier character set, and it is showing you uh, keyframes from all the controls of this specific... Let me just shrink this a little bit. It's showing you all the keyframes for, for all the controls right here. So if I selected this head, like you really can't, if I key this head, it's literally key, if I press the keyframe button and I'm on this character set, it's literally going to keyframe every single control that's a part of this character set. So if you want to just edit a very specific control, just turn off, uh, go, to, go back to none. So now we can single out specific controls um, to edit. And then here you can, you know, readjust, you know, say if I wanted to, his head to look way up right there. I don't know why, but just to, just to show you. So I can key that, and after I'm done with that animation, now if I right mouse click over my clip and go to activate keys and check that off, now it should be fine. Now when I play it, We'll notice. There it is. Just pop this head up right there. So that's how you can edit some of your animation. Um, and say you're, um, you know, reusing rigs. Uh, let me bring in another character. This is also a, a great reason to use your uh, your tracks editor if you're trying to if you have multiple animation clips and multiple characters. If you create characters that have uh, the same rig or a very very similar rig with all the controls you can transfer your animation from uh, one character to another. So let me just open up my reference editor, uh, create reference, and let me just load my close quarters combat character. So here's my other character. Um, so I used the same rig when I made this, just modified it a little bit. Um, but what's great about this is so now when I go to back to my uh, character set um, button right here, I can load this CQC soldier character set. And I'll go to Window, Animation, Tracks Editor. So if I want to start putting some animation clips on him, uh, remember that little button with the stick figure with the plus? I'm going to load his character set now. And notice how he doesn't have anything. Granted, you'll still see this guy's animation playing. 
But uh, now I want to start putting some animation cycles on this other dude. So now I can start importing some uh, clips. So maybe I'll put a walk cycle clip on him. There we go. I'll just drag that out a little bit and play. So now we got two characters. And uh, because all their controls and all their information is basically the exact same thing, this makes it so easy to transfer animation from one character to another. Um, say you did have a character that had, you know, different, um, like, arm lengths or, you know, head sizes and whatnot. As long as your character uh, can control names, so as long as this, this is uh, head control and this is head control, if you're transferring these animation clips back and forth, Maya's just going to make sure it looks for the correct controller names, and uh, you can transfer. Uh, you, you should be able to properly transfer your, uh, your animation from one to the other. Even if their body type is a little uh, different, it'll do its best guess. You may have to edit. You know, Maybe your run cycle for this guy uh, may look fine on him, but say if this guy has like longer legs, you may have to tweak uh, and edit his animations uh, cycle just a little bit differently just to match it. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. Um, hopefully you can see you know, the uses for this. Um, oh, just as a, as a heads up, let me go back to my, uh, my base file. I'm not going to save that. So say you create new controls or say you wanted to add or edit a very specific control in your character set. Um, also, the character set is located uh, in your outliner. If you go to Window, Outliner, you should see this little uh, dummy-looking thing right here. It's like a red dummy. And that is your, your character set node right there. If you want to edit specific controls, if you want to take certain controls out of your character set or add them back in, um, if you just go to your character set editor... And this is kind of like a uh, light linking, if you if you know what that is. If you are um, if you like lighting, you basically select your light and what objects you want that light to affect. Same thing goes with your character set. So when I select my uh, character set right here, it's telling me where uh, all the connections that are a part of this. So um, let me just grab the controls. If I just grab all of his controls and go to auto load selection. Uh, this shows me all of the controls that I have applied to that. So say you uh, you make a new control for any uh, specific reason. Uh, you would just go back into this character set editor, select your soldier, and then, uh, yeah, let me just do that right now. I'll just create like a NURBS curve or something. I'll just bring this up. And, yeah, so when I select, is, if I have that selected and you just go to that auto load selection it should pop up right here whenever I have it selected so if I wanted to add this new control for whatever it is to this you can select your soldier and then select that nerb circle now that's part of your uh, your character set we can see uh, if you click on that this should be highlighted but uh... yeah that's just a brief uh, overview of the tracks editor. Hopefully, it's uh, it helps you in your animation uh, creation process, uh, making new cycles and transferring them from one character to another. Um, if there are any other you know things you guys want me to cover, uh, let me know, and I will do my best to making a tutorial whenever I get around to it. So, uh, thank you for watching. I think that was kind of lengthy. That was 35 minutes. I'll try to condense that next time, but. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and take care.